Our journey begins from the pages of history unwritten and Maldives is a setting. A chain of 1,200 scattered islands, each often much smaller than a rural village elsewhere. Since time immemorial, these tiny islands with nothing but sand and sea has so much charm and romantic allure. How do we know that? Well, we've had visitors from all corners of the world. Some by chance, some couldn't resist returning, and others just curious. Visit any of the 200 inhabited islands, and a chat with the elderly will lead to tales of sailors and shipwrecks, of politics and romance, of those who came. Some couldn't leave, some didn't leave, and some left kept returning. Some settled and raised families, gave us of things they knew and imparted from their wisdom, imparted in our traditions and mixed theirs into ours. Despite such diversity and isolation, one language not spoken elsewhere was evolving. Traditions and culture from the East and West fused and infused with poetry and prose, with beats and dance, was carried from island to island simply by none other than small boats, referred to as Oridoni. Something else we truly consider our own. The word Odi is a generic name that gives the seafaring vessels of Maldives character and a personality much like the term ship has more character than boat. These were the true lifeblood of our island nation and though taken for granted, still continue to be. Our whole lives revolved around it depended on it, from being a means of gathering food to the only means of getting around. It was also the only means of passing a message across shores. This was true for even kings and queens. Because of its significance in our lives, festivities centered around the various stages of the Odi construction. Every milestone of building, from laying the keel to touching water, is celebrated with gusto through dance and poetry, to many a beat. Fascinating is the story of the Odi. No blueprint, no drawn design, no concept sketched. The entire project, well planned, is in the head of the Mawadi. That's the head carpenter. What's even more remarkable is that the Odi needs no alterations. When it touches water the first time, it's seaworthy and ready for her role in history. Abirumi farivamu fole gulhazari.
journey from one island to another always forged new relationships, mended broken ones and strengthened old ones. So no trip was considered small, not even a trip to the neighboring island, and no matter how frequently traveled, the only greater concern was over the exchange of gifts. Meals were shared on the same spread while recounting the latest stories and events, a testament to the unity and camaraderie that existed among the natives. No feast was complete without Thal, a presentation by the host that involved a group of men in rows, singing words of rich poetry and dancing to the jingling and percussions of tambourines. Tarajam is one of the oldest forms of expression in our heritage. Minnakuriya Izzata Aburali such as rowing a boat could be the inspiration behind a whole act of a musical performance. Kurufali Jaham, strongly associated with invitations, is one such piece inspired by the synchronized sweeping motion of the oars, complemented by poetic songs. Invitations were presented following a spectacular performance of Kurufali Jaham by the host while reaching the shores of the guest a gesture always retired in kind by the invitees.
We traveled quite frequently for work and supplies, for business and for governance. Visiting friends was frequent and a strong tradition despite slow sailing. Yet there was no room for boredom because epic poems and, and limericks would shorten journeys. The languid passage of the Odi immersed in the sound of gentle waves lapping against the hull and were often complemented with spontaneous poetry. This could involve unsettled debates or the friendly banter between friends for the entertainment of all on board. The beat for these was anything the fingers could tap. Tins and pots were always at hand. Fatigarujehu is one such activity that evolved from these journeys. Two pieces of bamboo that were clapped together in each hand to serve as percussions. Later on, this was fitted with tambourine jingles and during festivities, Bodobel led the percussions. <laughs>
Before the arrival of stage performances, all these festivities took place on the road and were actually road shows. A great part of the road shows was lungiri, which was a composition of a number of other items, including bodobel and percussions. lasting three days, involving a variety of activities. Bodumas Tumpung, Kordi Kendung and Bilat Dafinegu are all road shows, having their origins in untraceable history. Each has its own rituals and characters. For instance, Bodumas Tumpung involved a huge fish crafted out of woven palm leaves. Marching to beaten drums was common to all three processions. Men in rows would march down the main street singing to the rhythms of Tara, performing various musical items at intervals. One of these performances was Mafetish, which involved the use of arch of woven leaves along the midrib of the palm tree. The subtle twists and arches of the Mafeti truly complement the gentle sway of the dancers. Mafetish was also a men's performance, despite its effeminate mood. Gata no tanis pila, gata amuna gata.
anticipated game during these festivities was dousing the opposite sex in water. Ram Sugetarana the conclusion to Digumabuhenga, which is also the longest and most eventful road show. Bilat Dafinegum also initiates the Eid celebrations. Right after these festivities is back to life and work. Men would take to the seas for fishing and women would attend to small farms and their handicrafts. Agriculture was limited to a few crops while fishing was the main source of food and income. Men would leave before the break of dawn, hoping to return before sundown with their catch. When there was no fishing, there was work to be done on the dhonis. During breaks, entertainment begins with poems that became songs and percussions from water pots that later came to be known as bandiyajeho. Before dhonis set out on journeys, it was customary to offer pots of water to sustain the travellers till they reached their destination. Like Marfat Nesho, Bandi Ajahum was also a men's item, which later on became exclusive to women.
bustling with marine life is truly a surprise to the unsuspecting visitor.